Here I have the example, if I'm skilled at poker, then I'm going to win a bunch of money. So, go to the casino, I won a bunch of money playing poker, and I'm tempted to conclude that therefore I'm skilled at poker. Okay, so lots of people might actually believe this. This would be a very reasonable fallacy that, that a lot of people would make. Let's try to analyze it, and I claim this is not true. And the loose idea is that just because I went and won a bunch of money, I might have just gotten lucky. I might be terrible at poker, but I got really lucky. So I cannot claim that I am skilled at poker from this argument. So let's try to analyze the structure of this argument. First I have, if I'm skilled at poker, I'm going to give that a P. Then I will win money, I'm going to give that as a Q. So that was my first premise, if P then Q, so I'll write this as P implies Q, that is my first premise. Next up, I say, I won money playing poker. So this is asserting Q. And then what we're saying is P implies Q, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna copy it over here so that we have it all in place. P implies Q, then you assume the conclusion and you're going to get I skilled at, I'm skilled at poker. So the, large, the logical form that you have here is P implies Q, then Q, and then you get out P. But that wasn't modus ponens, that wasn't modus tollens, it was none of these. And the problem here is that you're kind of arguing by the converse. It, it's, it's Q implies P would be the converse of the statement, not P implies Q. If you had Q implies P here, then you could date Q and get P, but not the other way around. So this is trying to use the converse of the statement, and we know that a converse is not logically equivalent to the original statement. So this argument does not work. So this argument does not work, and we are going to say that it is invalid. I disagree with this logical structure.